Good evening, uh, everyone, uh, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm sure you'll all agree with me that this is an exceptionally uh, important uh, debate, and it's a pity, uh, and, I, and, we re and I'm sure like all other important debates, uh, what we're going to decide at the end is that we need to have more debates. <laughs> and I've got no doubt that we really have to discuss this thing in much more detail and in far greater depth. I think that uh, Yusuf and Enver uh, tried to create a context for the debate. But I don't think that there was enough of a context uh, to discuss it. I think if we're going to talk about privatization in education, then the first thing that we need to do is to talk about privatization in general. We must have a general overview of privatization. We must look at its political and ideological context and its historical context, and then make some decisions about privatization. We can then apply some of those ideas that we arrive at when we look at education. So whilst I think the context was created, and Yusuf raised the very important point, which we in South Africa have to talk about when we talk about privatization, is the question of inequality. How does privatized schools, what impact does it have on an unequal society? And we, we, we may in that context ask uh, Dr. van der Merwe what he thinks about their school system and what it's going to do for the inequality in South Africa. Is it going to perpetuate it? Is it going to make it any less? Uh, what's going to happen uh, in, in that context? And not just inequality, but the division of our society. You know, we come from a very divided society. So when we look at privatization in general and privatization in, in education in particular, those, I think, are all of the, the questions that we, we need to look at. Uh, so, I think once we've uh, looked at uh, privatization in general, we've looked at the way in which it impacts on the state and the responsibility of the state, uh, what it does to inequality, and in particular what it does to service delivery. And agency, whose responsibility is it to deliver education? Whose responsibility is it to deliver social services? We then have to use those tools to look at it in education. So I think that uh, Yusuf's paper was very useful in that regard because it started to unpack some of those questions. Uh, I've made mention of uh, uh, Dr. van der Merwe's uh, presentation. I'm not going to go into any more detail about that. I'm sure that you'll have quite a lot of uh, questions uh, for him in relation to, to that. Uh, we, I, th I think we, we have to raise the whole question of profit motive, uh, going on to the stock market. Uh, uh, you know, what happens when it stops being profitable? Do you just withdraw all your investments and, and so on? So it, it certainly uh, raises a, a lot of issues. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, the whole issue that uh, David raised about collaboration schools, and I've argued about it uh, against him uh, once before, so I'm, 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 <laughs> I don't want to repeat all the arguments I had about it, uh, but I think that uh, we should not be intimidated into accepting any solution uh, because this present education system is so poor. My own view is that it's the state's responsibility to provide education. It's our responsibility to make sure that the state does that. And I'm not sure that David is answering that issue, taking that issue seriously enough. Uh, we, we really should get the state to do its, uh, to do its job. If there are, that's not to suggest, I don't think that anybody is suggesting that if there are groups of people in society that can assist the state, that they shouldn't be assisting the state. 
but it's the manner that the assistance takes place that I think we should be raising and investigating. Now, the only paper that I've really had a chance to look at before uh, this afternoon was Heather's. And, I, and she gives us a really useful tool to analyze all the interventions that people are pro proposing. And I, it's a pity that you didn't all have an opportunity to, to look at it. And when I said one good debate leads to another, I really meant that. I think the starting point should be that Heather's paper should be distributed. We should all have a really good look at it and use that as a framework for analyzing other interventions in, in education. I, I think all the papers were, were very useful and I think we can look forward to a, a very useful debate. As I said, and I'm going to repeat it, I think that we are going to decide that we need another debate and I would really then suggest that what we do is to look initially at the beginning, and I'm repeating what I said at the beginning, privatization in general in a lot of detail. And at the moment, there are, there's a lot of experience. In England, there's been a whole uh, lot of privatization of almost everything. What has been the result of all of that? Has it been beneficial or has it not been beneficial? Uh, when they privatize the, the water in England, and the water companies don't want to fix the pipes because it's going to take away their, their profit. So what does that mean? Uh, you know, so we've also, uh, you know, had these, uh, and I, I, I think that the question of privatization in South Africa in general must be debated. Now, we've had that debate in some areas, and uh, when we had the toll roads, the state tried to privatize, privatize to, uh, roads in an unequal society. It was very interesting that everybody objected to that. A whole lot of people. I'm sure a lot of people who send their children to private schools objected to those toll roads. Okay. And so I think that was the beginning of the debate on privatization in an unequal society like South Africa. And we have to, uh, to continue that debate and in my own view, oppose privatization. Thank you.